Hello class, we are talking about measures of central tendency and dispersion today. Uh, this is our introductory section, actually two sections uh, on statistics. And so let's go ahead and start by defining that term. So this is a chapter that's going to be really useful in everyday life in that we talk about statistics all the time. Uh, what a statistic does is it is there to summarize wider or a uh, wider range of information. Basically, we take a bunch of information down a bunch of data, and if we're summarizing that, that's way too much information. It's not pertinent for me to say, hey, this is everybody who fits that criteria. So instead, we have these statistics, which are there to summarize the data that gives us information about the data without giving us the entire data set. So uh, we're going to look at five different types of statistics in, this, in these two sections. Uh, three of them are called measures, measures of central tendency. And what a measure of central tendency does is it talks about the middle of the data set. What's going on with uh, a majority or the middle of that particular data set? Uh, you guys are going to have heard of these terms before. Um, one of them is the mean. Of course, the mean is uh, the sum of all the numbers divided by the number of numbers in our data set. So divided by the number of, of bits of data that we have. Uh, notationally, we're going to use the notation X bar. So an X with a little horizontal line over the top of it to indicate that we are discussing the mean. Okay. Uh, in math, we use the term mean, but in everyday language, we use the term average to, to describe this. We also are going to use the term median, and the median is the middle number when the numbers are arranged from smallest to largest. So you take all of the bits of data and you cross off the smallest and the largest until you arrive at the median. Uh, if there is an even number of terms in our data set, uh, we're going to have two terms once we get to the middle because we're going to cross off. Uh, let's say we had four terms in our data set. Uh, when you cross off the smallest and the largest, then you'd go to cross off the next two, but the, they both would cross out. So uh, what you do is you just take the average of those last two numbers. You would add them up and divide by two. Uh, lastly, for our measures of central tendency, we have the mode. And the mode is the number that occurs most frequently, mode most uh, sets may have one mode or no mode or multiple modes. We also are going to have measures of dispersion. And a measure of dispersion is going to describe how spread out a data set is. Okay? Uh, is the data set very spread out or is it really kind of clustered together? Uh, we have two terms that we're going to use here, one of which is called the range. And the range is the largest number, subtract the smallest number. Very easy to find. You just have to look for the big number, look for the smallest number, subtract them, you have the range. We are also going to have a term called the standard deviation. And we are going to use the standard deviation starting in 11.3. Um, but we do want to discuss how to calculate the standard deviation. Uh, and before we talk about that, I want to give you the notation that we're going to use for standard deviation. It's an O with like a little uh, squiggle kind of, or in maybe also you'll see it like this. Uh, and that's our notation for standard deviation. The best term, best way I can describe what the standard deviation does is it kind of describes about how far is a typical data point away from the mean. And we're going to, like I said, study this in depth in section 11.3. Um, but how we go about actually calculating that is rather gross. Uh, and it's given here. Uh, what you would to do is you would take the first term in the data set and subtract the mean and square it. And then you take the second term in the data set and subtract the mean and then square it. And you do that for every term in the data set. If there are for 50 terms in your data set, you would add up 50 numbers. Um, and you would square each one individually. And then you would divide by the total number, and then you take the square root of it. It is a pain. Thankfully, we do have a button on our calculator that will do this for us. And I will show you how you would do all of that in the next video.